Hello everyone, I'm Ricardo Amadio and today we will talk about uh, modern data stack and modern data database uh, Let's introduce before Unem and the uh, Agile Lab that is uh, our company that is sponsoring me for this talk. Agile Lab is an Italian consulting company and uh, we are specialized on data management, uh, data management, data strategy, data engineering. We work with the light data engineering. We are trying to shaping uh, the world of data engineering by evolving the actual situation. So we are, we are trying to convert the idea that data engineering just move the data from point A to point B. We are just saying that uh, data engineering must be involved on in all the life cycle of the data. So, uh, we are trying to change the actual data engineering in this kind of uh, modern data era. And uh, I'm Ricardo Medio, and uh, I'm a data engineer specialized on modern data stack and uh, data orchestrator. And for this uh, motivation, uh, in the last years with uh, enterprise companies, uh, startup, uh, and medium sized company, we start to refactor and reshape uh, the data stack. Uh, uh, and mostly the data procedure aspect. So for the re this reason, uh, I started to work uh, with uh, the modern data stack uh, like uh, two, three years ago, and uh, I didn't know that the, 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 the name is modern data stack, but it was it. And uh, from the definition, the idea of modern data stack is that uh, it's redesigned the 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 barrier and the data stack for access to the data. So it's enabling the, the data actors to have access to the data more easily, more easily. Uh, and also the, the language that it's uh, used by the modern data stack is as well. So we are trying to involve more people as possible, data scientists, data analytics, uh, everyone in our data stack by using SQL more easy for everyone to understand to, to learn it. And also, the modern data stack uh, is uh, uh, surfing the age of the cloud stack. So from, from, from pencils to cloud, we are trying to uh, uh, bring in the data from uh, on pencils server uh, to uh, our cloud. And uh, this is what the, the modern da data stack has. Uh, it's, it seems like this one, so we have Cloud Data Warehouse, Data Integrator, and Data Transformation like DBT, and uh, BI, Modern BI like Looker or Preset or stuff like this. Uh, it's fine, it's, it's good, it's just, the hype is very high for this kind of technology, everyone wants to use it, but the reality is different. SQL has a different dialect. So if you want to change your uh, data warehouse, data lake out, you need to change also your compiler for SQL engine and if you change your SQL engine it's a problem if you don't use like uh, SQL Mesh now. Uh, the integration between tools uh, can be tricky, can be difficult. We already as a as a consultant uh, it's our daily work to, to integrate tools together. And also this kind of tool being the, the product for team. So if you have data bricks, data bricks take it's it's a, a product that take your customer inside data it doesn't bring the data outside data or clouds that AWS doesn't want to, to move the data to another cloud. It's it's the our goal, the, the goal of the cloud, the, the goal of this kind of company. And also of course the ICO. So in this era that uh, the model data orchestrator, the model data stack is coming, the model data orchestrator is it's like a kind of like a, uh, everyone wants to create a new orchestrator, everyone wants to create a new tool, new integration tool, everything. And uh, there is a lot of tools current now. Many of these makes uh, the same things, they, they, they have the same, uh, the same pattern, the same architecture from this kind of point. And uh, I worked with uh, a lot of this one, and I enjoyed it to work it. But they have, they also have some problems. They doesn't uh, are perfect. Uh, if you if you are trying to find the perfect orchestrator, you you 
will not find uh, the perfect orchestrator here in the modern. You can continue to use your orchestrator, and you can continue to use your architecture without, uh, without it. And we will see, which is why I, I'm saying this one thing. So, from, uh, from the, my experience uh, to use this modern data orchestrator, from Daxer to Kestra, uh, Mage, uh, Perfect, or whatever you want, this is the key fundamental future that they have it. So they have the metadata management. So you can incorporate in your orchestrator the data observability. You want to know which is the data that ingestion that I'm transforming in this curated layer or bronze or gold, whatever. I can see on my data orchestrator with metadata. I can see which are the statistics, the data auditing of our column the partition evolution, the schema changing, etc., etc. We can integrate data lineage with the Spark or DBT. With Spark, it's more difficult, but with DBT, it's more easy. We can integrate uh, many tools of the modern data stack, so Armite, Fivetrain, uh, or other stuff like this. We can uh, have backfilling, partition scheduling. We can manage the dependency very easily between the pipeline, between teams, organizations. So Python dependencies or uh, language dependencies can be managed more easily in this kind of uh, tools, in this kind of orchestrator. Language agnostic also, because we, we can have it. The data validation also. It's made by our orchestrator, so the data validation is not uh, more <laughs> the data engineering rule, it's an, our task. It's uh, now also integrated in orchestration. We have uh, templates and uh, I/O input-output interfaces, uh, so we can use this template and share with our organization, so we don't have, in this way, uh, if I share a template of uh, ingestion uh, pipeline, I don't need uh, to to go to the data engineer or data science and say, oh, you are you're doing the, the, the DAG in the wrong way, you're not using the best practice, so you're not following what I'm saying. So in this way, I can instruct new junior data engineer, new junior data scientists to create pipelines. We can integrate also observability, infrastructure observability. We can have a high availability, so if uh, I need to have uh, an orchestrator that must to scale, to must to have a distribution work, I can integrate it. Uh, it's easy to deploy, and it's easy to deploy our pipeline in different distribution systems, like uh, Kubernetes on-premises, or Databricks, or AWS MR, or whatever I have, and also the modernization of uh, user experience. Everything is coming out. <laughs> So we have this kind of, they, they bring in the light a lot of functionality and they, every day they're releasing new functionality and I say, I can stay, I can every time see the newsletter and say, okay, today there is a data validation, today there is a, this new future, this new integration, and I can't. I, I, I must do my work and then I can't to, 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 to follow this kind of orchestrator every day to, to have it. So for this reason, as a, I'm not only a data uh, engineer, I'm also an architect for, uh, as a consultant. My decision for our customer must to be very clear, must be chosen, and if I use the wrong technology, the wrong architecture, it will be reflected on the many employers, many data engineers, many data scientists. For this reason, software decision for architect is very important. So you need to have a robust uh, uh, fundamental of design pattern. You must have a fundamental of uh, data architecture. You need to have a clear vision of the architecture. So the data orchestrator uh, must be an orchestrator. You, you, don't need, uh, you don't need another tool for uh, transformation engine. So we will see later. But the data orchestrator, as many seniors say in my company, but also outside, it's an orchestrator, not an engine. So, as also architect, uh, as a software engineer, more tools I integrate, more complexities. If I add every day more tools, more stuff, it will create only complexity in our team, in our customer, and it's very difficult to, to manage it. Don't manage complexity, never. 
infrastructure in the in this uh, architecture are decay. So if you start uh, like a startup or data team and you are very little, you can start with a serverless uh, solution uh, or managed solution by a cloud provider or something like this. But uh, when you have an enterprise company, corporate, you need to have an infrastructure that scale. Like Kubernetes or OpenShift, uh, whatever you want. So in this kind of data orchestrator, it's very important to have uh, uh, an idea, a concept that uh, the data pipeline, the Spark, the Spark pipeline, the DBT pipeline, the Polars pipeline must to be deployed on our infrastructure, not on the side of uh, the data orchestrator. I don't want to see the data orchestrator that is deployed on a EC2 on a simple server that run the Polar or the Spark engine. It's not their work. The work of that engine, data compute engine for Spark or Polars must be on a distributed distribution system like Kubernetes or whatever you want. So for this, it's very important to create a data pipeline that is agnostic from our cloud, agnostic from the kind of uh, uh, distribution system that we are using, so Kubernetes or OpenShift or whatever we want, on-premises or cloud. So if the customer want to change the infrastructure, can do it without refactoring all the code from this point of view. And uh, the most important thing is uh, if you have uh, 50,000 of line, it's not big data. I, every day at work I see pipeline on a flow that is starting and it makes two minutes or three minutes to finalize it and it's very small data. Most of this is small, small data and uh, at, the, at the customer I'm saying we, we are using Spark for just 10 rows. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm doing here? You need me for this? This is, uh, this is the truth, this is the truth. Sometimes we, we, we created a data team, we created infrastructure, everything that must scale, it must be scale like a big billion, trillion, petabyte, etc. whatever you want. But uh, we don't uh, have the, the, the idea of our data, we don't know the domain of our data, we don't know what we, we will be ingest in our data lake or data platform. So it's very important to show the technology and to be also flexible. So maybe we have uh, some tables, some domains, some databases that are very huge, but uh, if 80%, uh, 90% of the tables that we have, it's like 10 kilobytes or megabytes, don't use a big engine like Spark for it, from this point of view. Take, remind this, it's very important. So the modern data orchestrator, the modern data stack, it brings with us also the data lineage of observability as a concept, as a component, fundamental component of our architecture. It's, it's true, it's very, very true, but uh, m many of the new modern data orchestrator integrated the data lineage, integrated the data observability in their uh, UI, in their ecosystem. So, if you start to use it and integrate it on the ecosystem, it's fine from my side, but remember, it will, if you will work with the DAX or MAGE for three or four years and after you want to change, you need to change also the code, the metadata, the lineage, etc., etc. So remember that there is, the, there is this, the lineage is not an invention of the new modern data stack. The lineage of observability, it is, exists from 10 years ago. So remember to integrate the lineage observability with the open source solution, like open metadata or open lineage, or for DBT there is an Elementor. Uh, there are many, many kind of solutions for this one. And also data validation. So in the current era, data validation is uh, the uh, the word that the data engineer and data team doesn't want to ask. You're doing data validation? You're sure you're doing data validation, data quality in your pipeline? You're sure? Most of the data teams that I talk it doesn't do it. They just uh, have uh, the same table from uh, five years ago and they do it, and they doesn't know what what's data is going on. I see many stuff about this. 
and data validation is, is very important. The new modern data stack uh, integrates uh, the validation with DBT, with uh, the modern engine, but we need to validate it uh, not only for our pipeline. If I'm a data engineer, that I need to uh, create a pipeline for uh, customer sales uh, or my domain, I can integrate the data validation, it's fine. It's only for me. No one it will care, just for me. But uh, in a big organization, an enterprise organization that uh, try to use uh, the concept of data product, data contract, data mesh, what is going on is uh, the validation of the data is becoming a fundamental key for integrated data mesh, for integrated uh, data contract to use data product, this kind of uh, new concept, new data-driven uh, methodology. So the data validation is uh, a fundamental key a fundamental component of our data orchestrator, but we must remember that uh, if we change the orchestrator, if we change the uh, the SQL engine, the, the Spark, whatever we are using, you need to change also. So remember to use an open source solution, agnostic solution like Pandera, Great Expectation, Solacore, or uh, uh, DQ, whatever you want from this one. And uh, the data validation is not only to check if uh, the column has a string or the schema, it's also to check if the, 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 the correctness of our data, the fresh of the data. So we need to validate it. I see some data, engine, data engineer that uh, update the last uh, layer of that, that platform just by doing delete insert of the last 30 days. They would delete the insert and say, no, no, the data validation is made by this. I said, okay. <laughs> so the expectation from this kind of uh, modernization is okay. I'm becoming more powerful. My data orchestrator have uh, the data validation, the observability, the lineage. It's very easy. I can see the model, the, the dashboard, and I, I can say this is the problem. Here, this is the problem. The problem is from the data sources. The, pro the problem is from uh, the infrastructure. Yeah, very easy. But the fact is that uh, sometimes it's sometimes uh, there is also issue in the modern data stack. So the, the issue it's not uh, mm, on. Uh, on our uh, on, on the our infrastructure, sometimes the issue is uh, how we implement it, how we choose to implement it, how we use the design pattern in the modern data stack. So, we, we, with the modern data stack, uh, they doesn't resolve the architectural decision, the architectural uh, problem. The modern data stack uh, is just uh, an era, just an age. Change. Uh, these tools in our company, in our customer, is very hard. Corporate, uh, enterprise, or small company, it's very hard to change uh, at C level or manager level. It's very difficult from this point of view. If I go to my manager and say, I want to change uh, GitLab, and say, go GitLab, I want to use GitHub, mm, it's not so easy to do it. I want to change and say, OK, I don't want to use more Spark, I want to use Polars. Mm. How many people know Polars in our team? Just you. How you can change it? It's not easy. The change of uh, data stack, the change of tools, uh, integration is difficult. Also, in the data approach, the data management approach, like data mesh, we, we work, we work with data mesh, we try to uh, invest in data mesh in our customer, customers is very difficult from this point of view. Data, data mesh is like changing the organization, changing how people see the, the data, how people organize the data, how people exchange the data between teams and uh, product manager. So from this point of view, it's also difficult to change the tools. But maybe buy a new component, uh, buy a new tool, uh, or uh, replace tool, it's not a solution. If I replace uh, Spark or whatever with Polar, it's not uh, the solution, maybe. It's not the, the solution for me. And uh, as a team leader, as a project leader, I can say to my developer, to my data engineer, to my junior, okay, uh, just wait. 
just wait that, uh, that uh, the evolution of the customer, the evolution of the modern data stack it will happen in our uh, company, in our customer. I need to evolve the, our data stack without buying or replacing tools. I need to integrate this functionality, observability, lineage, monitoring, validation, in the, the, the actor stack. Okay, so we, we, don't, we don't need to buy it. We can just uh, refactor our architecture from this point of view. And uh, I want to see with you which are the, the basics, uh, the medium advanced uh, solution that we can use to refactor, to uh, uh, modernize our stack technologies. So, so before, before to start uh, to talk about observation uh, and lineage, uh, let's start from the fundamental. So I'm a Pythonist, but you, you can do it in, in every language that you want. So remember to use test driven development, uh, unit testing, uh, at Flow. In at Flow you can use uh, unit testing, you can use deck bag for see how the deck is generated. You can um, test the data pipeline also on Spark to monitor which is the, the schema that you're validating, uh, that uh, the iceberg implementation is working, that the delta is working uh, in, the, in the proper way, the plan of the Spark is uh, good for you, it's uh, the, what you want, there is no shuffle in the explaining, and stuff like this. Integrate, uh, continuous integration, uh, the continuous deployment is your copilot, it's your normal, normal tools. So if you don't have it like GitHub, GitLab, or stuff like this, and you don't have a continuous deployment like action on GitHub, you need to implement it. You need to implement it by our ancestor, it, it works. You need to also automate uh, m m your work. So uh, make file, who's make file, who's poetry, who's uh, many tools like this, pre-commit, uh, automate your work. Create a copilot in your system, in your environment. And uh, after doing it, you, we can go to an IG level. So we can start to integrate the best practice. We can start to des decide also which is the best practice to use it in all the organization, in all the teams, in all the uh, developer, uh, data engineer, data scientist. We can use dynamic multitasking. We can use task group, pool and other stuff like this, and Airflow that's very useful for us. We can also generate DAG. If I, for example, the last week, uh, 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 another data in general just, uh, just write like a, a copy and paste of uh, 20 pod operator launched from a DAG. I say, why you copy and paste everything? You can generate it. You can uh, generate it by configuration, you can generate it by Python, uh, from Terraform, w whatever you want. Why not using the automation? Why not using the configuration, dynamic configuration of YAML uh, and uh, automation of Python or Terraform to integrate it in Airflow or in your orchestrator? You need to also be transparent with the organization. To, you need to map the schedule of the DAGs, you need to see if in the same time your DAG, you have a limitation, maybe you have 50 DAGs in the parallel, in the limitation flow, so you, you want to schedule uh, 1,000, you say it, it's impossible. It's impossible. So it's very important from this point of view to collaborate, to decide which is the best practice, decide where is the documentation, and remember it, and watch it. And in the last part, you need to integrate observability, and you need to integrate the lineage, as I already said, so you can integrate open lineage very easily in Airflow. There is already an integration, there is open metadata also, so you can create a data ingestion pipeline with open metadata and integrate the, 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 the metrics of your data that you're ingesting. We can use the data validation tools like Great Expectation, DQ, or whatever you want, integrate it and observe this on also another platform. You can integrate also the infrastructure observability with Prometheus, open telemetry. We use also Elasticsearch. We can use also tracing with, uh, for uh, Jagger, sorry, for trace the, the, the pipeline consumption. So you can do it without buying another tool.
without replacing the orchestrator, without uh, do it. So, why not? And uh, the final thoughts, it's, uh, it's hard to evolve, it's very difficult to evolve, but uh, if you don't do it, uh, you will be stuck. You will be stuck and then you will be burned out. So remember, it's not buying a new technology or replacing a tool that you are evolved your career, your data stack. It's in your side. You need to decide to evolve it. Thank you.